Overview, what is it? Whichever way you looked at it, the old Spur was really just a stretched version of the Continental Coupe. Too big to be sporty and not gracious enough to be a proper GT. This new one drops the Conti bit just flying Spur will do now and shifts focus from the front seats to the back. That's where most Spur owners will sit, especially in China, where most of them will live. It's still roughly related to the Conti, but the differences, both mechanical and visual, are greater than before. It's not as grand and expensive as the enormous Mulsanne, but Bentley reckons it's still a cut above your average German barge. Driving. What is it like on the road? The last one tried hard to convince us it was up for a Sunday blast. This one has relaxed a little. Like the new Conti Coupe Cabrio, it isn't a completely new platform, but a thoroughly re-engineered one. The distance between the wheels across the front axle is 2 cm more than before and 3.5 cm greater at the rear, giving it a more confident stance. It still has air suspension, but the springs are 10-13% softer than before. The suspension bushes are 25-38% softer. All of this gives it a degree of compliance that the last car lacked. The suspension has four modes, comfort at one end, sport at the other, with two in Betwini settings. Full comfort mode loosens body movements without becoming too squishy. Full sport tightens things up without becoming harsh. Fine. But you have to toggle between modes by stabbing at the infotainment screen, which means you take your eyes off the road rather than feeling for a switcher button. Still, the new settings help the Spur feel more balanced and a touch more deliberate in its movements, perhaps. And apart from when you're absolutely standing on the brakes or asking it to properly attack a tight corner, this never really feels like a 2.5-ton car, which is perhaps its greatest dynamic achievement. There are two engines both of which should be fairly familiar. There's the 6.0-liter twin-turbo W12 which now gives you 616 bhp, making this the most powerful four-door Bentley ever, and there's the Audi-derived 4.0-liter V8. The W12 accelerates with ruthless commitment, summoning a sort of earthly strength to go from 0.62 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds. And the old six-speed auto has been replaced by the excellent ZFE8 speed like a good butler, it works diligently around the clock, though you'd never really know it was there. The stats are rounded off nicely with a top speed of 200 miles per hour. The V8 isn't that much slower, but it's 10 grand or so cheaper and a notch more economical. On the inside, layout, finish and space, perhaps it's best to begin in the back, where things have changed. Firstly, you'll have to choose between two individual rear seats or a bench with three.
then you'll wonder whether to spec the rear entertainment package, which you should, because it comes with 10-inch screens mounted behind the front seats, hooked up to the onboard Wi-Fi, and a pop-out touchscreen controller. It's the size of a smartphone and controls everything from changing the TV channel to altering the heated cooled massaging rear seats and even streams dashboard dials so you can keep an eye on the nav and speedo. If you're feeling especially flush, you should option the fold-down picnic tables, which just accommodate a laptop or perhaps a small dinner plate plus a glass of champers. Which, of course, you'll have cooled in the optional fridge behind the central armrest. Finally, exercise your rears with a whopping 1100W name stereo also optional, but essential. It sounded good in the old spur, but this time it's even crisper thanks to thick double glazing and a less boomy exhaust to reduce ambient noise and focus the ears. The cooler and stereo amps take a chomp out of the boot, but you can still slide a couple of golf bags in the space left behind. Owning, running costs and reliability, mid-teens miles per gallon, for the W12 the V8 should do 26 miles per gallon, group 50 insurance, max tax, obviously, utter brain crippling depreciation in this market you have to want one. And you do, right? Verdict, final thoughts and pick of the range, new flying spur is at last the car it should always have been finally a viable, super luxury alternative to the S-Class.